Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 23rd. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, highs today are going to be in the 90s. It seems like we went from the 50s to the 90s overnight, but you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's almost June, so it's nice when the weather actually catches up with the calendar. So I did a little bit of uh, yard work this morning. It's still quite early. My favorite time of day. I'm uh, waiting for my wife to wake up, and she'll make breakfast on you know Sunday breakfast. It's uh, it's a good good time of day. I really like the like the hour or two before this when you know it's very quiet and the birds are singing and all that. That's that that's a a nice time. But this is good. This is good. And, you know, then when my wife wakes up, it's not like that makes it bad. It's just different. You know, it's just there's more stuff going on then. And I can't focus as easily on things that I want to focus on. Uh, but there's a lot of good stuff there, too. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. But I do like this time of day. So, Stan Nikowski pipe, which is a Kind gift to my friend Christian uh, Bona Piper, and I really, really love this pipe. And this 2016 Warhorse, been smoking a lot of this since I opened the tin on Friday, and uh, took some yesterday when I went to visit my friend Jack and uh, shared this with him, and uh, he he enjoyed it as well. It's interesting the the topping just seems to have gone away over the years uh, this is 2016 so that's what roughly five years uh, you know there's like a real subtle hint of something there but it but it's not anything like it was when I when I opened a fresh tin back in 2016 so it's just interesting because the tin was sealed and all that Whatever the flavoring is, it apparently doesn't last. But the benefit of that is you got a really good solid blend underneath that. It's it's just delicious. So I'm enjoying this quite a bit. <clears throat> so yeah, I got a chance to uh, to drive out to visit my friend Jack yesterday. Um, it's about a two-hour drive. He lives more in the central PA. Like close to Harrisburg, and I'm more eastern PA, close to Philadelphia. Thankfully, not too close. But. And I, I drove out there and was able to spend a couple hours, actually about an hour more than I was expecting, <laughs> because I just lost track of time, and we were having so much fun. Yeah, it's just so good to, to be able to sit down with somebody and light up a pipe and just talk, you know, not about anything in particular, but just, you know, it, we don't have that very often in our, in our world today. It's, it's a lost, um, I was going to say a lost art, but it's not really an art. It, it's just a lost opportunity. You know, we don't have brick and mortars that we can hang out at unless we're very lucky and we live close to a place like Boswell. Uh, we don't have very likely folks in the immediate area that are pipe smokers. You know, we're probably fairly isolated in that regard. We got YouTube, and that's a great help because I can sit down and have a pipe with you, and you can. You know, six hours from now, sit down and have a pipe with me. It, it, it's, it's great. But there's something about just being physically in the same place with someone. And uh, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it, and I hope Jack had a good time, too. Jack, um, as I've told you before, is a big fly fisherman, and uh, He's, he's kindly given me uh, a number of items, and he had a whole duffel bag full of things that he had, had found. Uh, some really cool stuff. I, I love the historic aspect of, of a lot of things. I, 
one of the things I collect is old fly tying vices and, you know, old flies, old fly patterns. Uh, not that these are terribly old, but there's some things like those bottles that I showed you a while back uh, that you use for the dry fly float. And he had another one of those. And I'm just, I'm just intrigued by that stuff. I love the history, even if it's only 20, 30 years ago. So that was very kind of Jack. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I was able to deliver his uh, dog pipe, which Doug Owen kindly uh, gave to Jack. And I just cleaned it up and you know, did a little bit of restoration work. I'll have a video on that in a couple weeks. I've got to finish up the the guardsman video, and then i got to edit the, the custom-built video. But there'll be something coming out on that. So I got a chance to, uh, to to take the pipe to him, and boy, he was he was thrilled. Just in case you don't know the story, Jack is a lifelong spaniel lover, and Doug heard that he was looking for a carved dog custom build, and Doug had one, and he offered to send it, and it turned out to be a spaniel, and you know this this was just absolutely perfect. So uh, I hope Jack doesn't mind this, but I'm going to give him his YouTube debut right now and show you Jack with uh, his uh, dog custom built, spaniel custom built, enjoying them. Uh, and there you can see he's wearing his spaniel shirt and of course his Boswell pipe hat. So Jack's a great guy. He was really happy with the, the pipe. I sent that picture off to Doug this morning with some other uh, photos of the pipe. So. He'll, he'll get to enjoy it as well. And, uh, of course, Jack sends his thanks to Doug, and I send my thanks to Doug. It was a great thing he did. Uh, if you don't know Doug Owen and the Cargo Hold, uh, he's going to be a guest on my Friday Night live stream coming up soon. I, I don't remember the the date exactly, but it's it's in the next next month or so. So we're we're looking forward to that. Ah, uh, so yeah, I went. I I got out the jacks about one o'clock and left around four, and drove back home. And it's it's not a bad drive. I I usually take the turnpike to get there, and then on the way back I go on seventy eight, which takes a little bit longer, but it takes me past Cigar International, so I get to stop in and get a couple cigars. Uh, although, because I was supposed to leave at 3 and I didn't leave till 4, uh, I decided to take the turnpike home uh, just to get home faster because uh, my wife was expecting me to be home. And I really didn't need any cigars. So, so I, I got a couple of stories for you. And... I'm probably going to make some people unhappy with this. this. This sounds really unkind, but these are stories of stupid people. You know, that, and I want to say up front that we've all had our stupid moments. You know, I've, I've certainly had them. And, you know, we, we do things, we go, oh, gee, I shouldn't have done that. And then we, you know, so in the first case, I think this is just a monumental case of stupidity, and I hope this person gets the chance to realize that what he's doing is stupid. <laughs> so I'm, I'm driving home on the turnpike, and there's traffic. It's not, you know, congested, but, but there's, there's cars in both lanes. And speed limit is 70, so I'm probably going about 75 uh, with the rest of traffic. And we're just zipping along happy and everything's fine. And I hear from my left side um, the roar of a motorcycle. And I, okay, a motorcycle's coming up on my, my left side, and that's fine. And motorcycle does indeed pass, and it's a guy on one of these, I don't know what, Everything I know about motorcycles I learned from Robert Persig, so I don't know what the make was or anything like that, but it's one of these ones that where the, you have to basically be lying down forward to ride them. They're, they're just flat across the top, and he's lying all the way down, and he just zips past me, 
you know, I'm going 75. He had to be going close to 90. And starts weaving in and out of the the cars in front of me so that he can, you know, get down the road. Okay. Um, that's, you know, probably not the best way to travel, but it, it's working for him. I thought, okay. Not an issue. And then I hear another one. You know, there's two, often you see several motorcycles together. You know, guys go out for a ride together. And that's quite normal. So I hear the sound coming up on the left side. And he swerves in front of me. And this guy's riding the same kind of motorcycle. But instead of sitting on it and leaning forward, he's actually lying on his stomach with his feet hanging off the back of the seat just like laying out there like he's flying you know with the motorcycle underneath him again got to be doing close to 90 and just swerving in and out of the traffic and all that i thought you know that's stupid <laughs> now somebody might come back and say oh no that's a common way to ride a motorcycle i don't know but it just looked incredibly dangerous to me and You know, and I'm okay with the first guy. You know, I, I wish he wouldn't have done the swerving in and out of traffic thing, but, you know, I'm okay with him. But this guy was just... And and as he went down the road, you could see this, like, chain reaction of people putting their brakes on and just slowing down because you're just expecting something to happen, you know? Uh, yeah. I hope he realizes that that's not a smart thing to do and had a bit of an interruption there my apologies uh i think i was saying that i hope a kindly state trooper will stop that gentleman and educate him uh anyway so that was that was the first thing that happened to me on my way home that just kind of made me think but there's something wrong uh so i'm driving home you know continuing home and uh my wife calls and she decides that she wants me to uh, pick up dinner on the way home and I said okay um, she wants a so there's this burger place if you're familiar with um, steak and shake or there's another one these steak burger places this one is called Freddy's uh, it's like Freddy's fun burger or something something odd like that and it's another one of these steak and shake type places where they, you know, they have these these hamburgers. So she likes them. I don't. Um, so she said, "Will you get me a, you know, one of these burgers?" And I thought, oh, "Okay, you know, I'll, I'll, that's not a problem." So I get off the turnpike, and the grocery store is not far from there. I had to pick up a few things at the grocery store, and then uh, the, the Freddy Burger place is. Uh, sort of the next chunk of mall land over. And Freddy's is in one part of the parking lot. And, you know, it's got its own parking lot here. And then there's a road, a two-way road. And then on this side, there's a Chick-fil-A. I do not understand what goes on at Chick-fil-A. I... I tried to eat their chicken sandwich, and it was awful. I, I'm i sorry, I don't understand why people like it. It's dry, tasteless chicken on a squishy bun with a pickle and a hint of mayonnaise. I, there's nothing good about it. And and my wife loves it. You know, she, she gets their, their chicken fingers and a salad, and she's a happy person. I've tried them and they're just they're just not good. I don't understand it. And yet there is a ridiculous number of people trying to get chicken from Chick-fil-A at six o'clock on a Saturday night. They have two drive through lanes. There are at least at least twenty cars in waiting to place the order. The parking lot is completely full. There's people waiting to get their food after they've ordered, all lined up. And then this two-lane road, 
there's a string of cars in on, along this two lane road, probably about 10 cars stopped because the first guy wants to turn into the parking lot and join the chicken nuts. And at least he didn't turn and, and block traffic, you know, cause that would have been, I've seen people do that. So I'm, I got to go across this, this two lane road and make a left hand turn. And then I'm home free. I don't go into the chicken nut land. I just need to make a left hand turn while this guy's waiting to make his left hand turn to go into Chick-fil-A. So he, he's good. He, he sits there and he waits patiently and everything's fine. And I come to the end of the drive and I, I stop and I see that he's stopped and I look in the other direction and I see that there's no one coming and I go out and I make my left hand turn and I find myself head to head with a, with another car. And the guy in this car has just pulled out of the Chick-fil-A parking lot. So he's now a satisfied chicken nut. And he, he wants to go in the direction that I'm coming from, but he realizes that there's 10 cars lined up waiting to turn into the parking lot. And his only option is to get into that line of 10 cars and wait, or he can drive in the other lane. You know, you can drive in the opposing lane, pass those 10 cars, and then cut in, and, and, and he's home free. And I guess he figured, you know, why should I wait? Uh, and, you know, I get it. Again, we, we do these things. I would probably consider doing this. But it's what happened next that was stupid. <laughs> so we're, you know, we're almost bumper to bumper. And this guy starts yelling. Now, I've got the windows up. I've got the air conditioner on. I've got the radio on. I have no idea what he's saying, you know, but he's turning red and he's gesturing and he's pointing to the cars and he's pointing to the direction he wants to go and he's throwing up his hands and he's yelling. Now I got an option. I got two choices here. I can turn left into the Chick-fil-A parking lot, which would put me into the chicken nut land, or I can wait for him to back up. So he's, you know, he's yelling and he's really very angry. And so I, I, I consider my options and I turn and I look at him and I go. And he just sort of, you know, collapses down and backs his car up. And, and I drove past and, and, you know, that was the end of the story. But why get that angry? You know, I'm doing something stupid and I get caught and now I'm going to yell at the world over it. I'm going to yell at the, I mean, I just don't know where that energy comes from. I, if I had that much energy, I want to apply it to something productive, not to something that is clearly not only non-productive, but making me look worse for doing something stupid. The world is full of people, and that's its greatest problem. <laughs> and we're all wonderful, and we're all stupid at times. And uh, the only hope I have is that we don't get too many Darwin Award nominees out of this kind of daily stupidity that we see. Anyway, this is probably going longer than it should. I'm going to finish up the pipe, uh, hopefully have some breakfast soon, and uh, get on with the day. I hope you're all having a great Sunday. Uh, wish you all the best in the week ahead. I want to say thank you again to, to my buddy Jack for hosting me and for uh, his kind gifts and just his friendship. And thank you again to Doug Owen from the Cargo Hold for, for the, uh, the pipe. Jack really appreciated it, and you'll be uh, you'll be hearing from him, I'm sure. Uh, and thank you all for watching. So you all take care, and until we talk again, I'll look forward to speaking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.